Hey guys, I'm out here working in the garden for this year and I've got the Yardworks tiller out. I bought this last year and I figured uh, I've had enough experience with it now that uh, I could give a half decent review on it and let you know what I like and what I dislike about it. So uh, we'll take a look at that now. So this is a Yardworks machine. I don't believe it's made by MTD but the motor is a champion motor. It's 19 inch rear time, so it's much better than the little electric one I have. I kept that because that's also handy. They both have their purpose. Um, 212cc engine. Uh, it's, it seems to have enough power for what it needs to do. Um, I've broken one of the tines already. So they're strong enough considering the big rocks that I'm hitting, but they will break eventually. Um, I haven't sheared any uh, bolts yet. The clutch here seems to um, slip before the bolts um, will even come close to shearing. So bigger rocks or clumps of grass, like thicker clumps of grass will stop it. And uh, all you do is just release back up a little bit and then keep going. If the tines are dug right into the ground and you stop, which I'm doing plenty of times to pick out rocks, then when you restart the clutch will slip. You just pick it up a little bit and it'll start spinning again. Now starting this thing is pretty simple. They recommend when you shut it off to allow the, uh, to turn the fuel off and allow the machine to burn out on its own and uh, use up the rest of the fuel. But um, you turn the fuel on, you put the choke to the open position, give it a little bit of throttle and then make sure the on switch is on and then pull and it starts pretty good. Now one of the issues I have had with it is when I'm tilling uphill and you can see my garden is on a bit of a slope and when I get to the end of it, um, the wheels are pointing up even more than this actual grade. So the motor ends up pointing up at maybe a 45 degree angle, maybe even steeper. And what has happened is the engine would die constantly. It was such a pain and I realized that it was the oil pressure switch that would uh, cut it out. So what I did here is I just opened this up and I unplugged the oil pressure switch, which is probably not recommended, but for the little bit of uh, seconds that I spend at that angle, it's uh, much better than having it stall all the time. So that was one of the pet peeves um, is that that oil pressure cutoff would would trigger the the motor to stop um, the other thing i don't like is the drive shaft engagement is done by these little pins so this pin comes out and you can freewheel it so you slide this in you put the pin back in and that's how you can move it around so as you can see that's a bit of an operation every time so if you want to go from one area to another you either have to leave it in gear and drive there slowly with uh, whatever speed you have here even on rabbit it's barely a walking pace or you have to unclip this so you can drag it over there and it's a bit of a process each time i, I kind of wish that this had some sort of um, automatic disengagement or some sort of lever i could pull but i guess you get what you pay for now you can see my garden is down here. Some of my plots in my shed is way up there. So if I keep this in gear, even at the fastest speed, it probably takes me like three minutes to get up there and put this thing away. And then once I get it in the garage, if I drive it in, I have still have to disconnect them in order to move it around once the machine's off. So bit of a pain in that design. But other than that, this is a pretty good tiller. Um, it's the only one I've ever used with rear tines, so I can't really compare it to anything. Um, but I'm quite happy with it. I wish I had a bigger one for the big tractor. I'm looking to get one, but they seem to sell as fast as they go for sale. So it's going to be a while for that. But this does the job. You can see I've expanded the garden quite a bit this year. I still have lots to do there. And um, this, uh, this rig will be enough to do it all. So I'm just going to put the camera on the tripod and I'm going to till this uh, little garden here. Uh, for the first time this season. So this hasn't been tilled since last year. Um, so 
winter set in the snow all the way to the snow and everything so everything's quite compacted but uh, we'll till that up now okay so this is already warm because I've been tilling all morning but uh, I'm not gonna need the choke so I'm gonna turn this mic on just give it a good pull go to full throttle So that little plot is ready for planting. Now you can see this is a, a half decent uh, tiller for the price. Uh, I think I paid a thousand dollars Canadian for this. Uh, I actually bought it at regular price because I was too impatient to wait for it to come on sale but I'm sure it comes on sale for maybe even half of that because it's from Canadian Tire and they're known for their 50% off sales. But you know for somebody that has like a a medium-sized garden or just doesn't want to mess around with a smaller tiller and you have a couple hundred dollars to spend I think it's a pretty decent tiller um, after I purchased this I've seen several uh, Troy built and a couple of other different brand uh, used tillers on marketplace um, that might even be a better option because you may get 
a much better tiller, uh, even if it does have more uh, years in it. Um, for how much you actually use it, you might end up with a nicer machine. But uh, other than the little quirks there with the, uh, the drive line pins and the uh, oil pressure switch, I think this is a pretty decent machine. If any of you guys have a machine like this or something similar, let me know what you think. If you found this video helpful, I appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. And I'll see you in the next one.